Uh, we're going to dive right in, though. Before we talk about Scoob, the review of the new Scooby-Doo film, uh, and we're going to later on talk about the few, what's movie going potentially going to look like in the middle of a pandemic with multiple states, even ours right here in Illinois, reopening uh, in the next couple of weeks. What is movie going amidst a pandemic going to look like? We're going to get into that uh, later on to end the show. But first things first, I thought this would be a good topic to do to kind of clear up I mean, the best we can, some confusion regarding HBO Max. This is an upcoming streaming service set to launch on the 27th of May, exactly a week from today. And I thought it'd be interesting, too, to kind of like give give kind of a description. What is this thing? Because I've followed this for several months, but people have lives. They're not like me. They probably have, maybe not have heard of this HBO Max. So what exactly is it? And HBO Max, to start is Warner Media's streaming service. Warner Media owns HBO. They own Cinemax. They own TNT. This is their entry into the streaming game. They also own Cinemax, which is part of the way this streaming service gets its name. It includes HBO programming. It will include HBO programming. It'll also include some original shows and some interesting original content and stuff from Warner Media's catalog. They released this week a list of all the movies that are going to be on there, most of the movies, I don't think all of them, but they're going for classics with this thing, as far as the movies are concerned. Uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Maltese Falcon, Cool Hand Luke, Bonnie and Clyde, Ben-Hur, and Singing in the Rain, just to name a few, on top of some other shows, some original programming in the form of a Gossip Girl reboot, a Grease reboot, I don't know why we need that, um, boot and and the big thing, and I'm surprised not many people are talking about this, and I think it's just because people don't really know exactly what HBO Max is just yet. There is going to be a Boondocks reboot on this thing, which oh, I don't know. Is, hold on. Like the, the the Western anime about African-American life in, yes. in America, modern-day America? Boondocks. What? That Boondocks. It's going to have its own show <laughs> Dude, on HBO. Okay. I'm excited because people have been talking about like a potential Boondocks movie for years, and like, but it hasn't happened. And now they're going to reboot it, which I is love cool. The other, the other show. Before I get into the big question, boys, the other show that's actually interesting to me, and I'm I'm going to watch this. It's called the, uh, the Not So Late Show with Elmo. It's going to be a talk show with Elmo from Sesame Street. Okay. Mm. All right. <laughs> yes, it's. I, I'm very excited about this because I'm not a fan of late night TV. It's gone downhill in the last ten years, but I'm really excited to see what the they kind of do with this back. thing. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward, man. We lost Letterman. We need some Elmo. My question, though, for you guys, and I'm going to throw it over to Joe to start out with this. Uh, now that I kind of just broke down HBO Max, um, I, here's my question. We have Netflix, we have Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Apple+, Plus TV, HBO Go, HBO Now, YouTube TV. Canopy is kind of rising in popularity now, too. That QB or Queeby, whatever, however you say it, that other streaming service, too. Now we're going to have HBO Max in another week. Uh, have we reached a saturation point when it comes to streaming services? That's the big question for this show today, at least for this first topic. Joe, I'll throw it over to you, your thoughts. Uh, yeah, I think we have at this point. <laughs> Just listen. Just hearing like what's gonna be featured on there, and when you ever watch any of these trailers promoting HBO uh, Max, you see like all the stuff that's gonna be on there that's not really seen on HBO. Like Rick and Morty is in this trailer, and all these other shows that like are just never really seen on um, on HBO. Really, it's just like okay, like like Friends is getting a reboot on there. It's gonna be like I, to re basically like get my point across is. Uh, I don't really know what's on this platform, and like the fact that it's like, well, okay, now like that's why Netflix is losing so many other properties that they don't have like you know an attachment to, the, or it's not original properties because you have stuff like HBO Max is taking it away from them. You have stuff like Disney Plus is taking it away from them and everything. So it really sucks now when it's like, damn, you know, it used to be really good when it was just Netflix, Hulu, and maybe even Amazon. It was just those three were the big three you just you know could own. And you could just swap between those three to watch whatever the hell you wanted. But now it's like you got 20 other apps like in order to watch this show, in order to watch this reboot. All oh, that if you want to catch all 20 seasons of your favorite show, it's all here. And it's just like, man, this is just getting ridiculous to me at this point. And um, you know, Warner Brothers had their uh, they had their app too with uh, the DC app that they were trying to do, and then eventually they were gonna make a Warner Brothers one as well. And then, like, that just failed, and then they launched this as well, and it's like, okay, now we have another HBO app 
Because I don't even know. We're going to talk about this, I'm sure. But I don't even know still if it's like, if I have an HBO Now subscription like I do, is HBO Now just gone and it becomes this? Is it HBO Go attached to this at all? It's just, it, there's so many of these things now. I'm just confused with what's happening. There is a lot of confusion on that front because HBO Go is the service if you have a pre-existing HBO subscription, a cable subscription, through DirecTV, Xfinity, whatever the case may be. You can use HBO Go as like an on-demand way to watch your HBO content by logging into your account. So like if you have a Roku TV that doesn't have the cable connected to it or something like that, or watching it remotely. HBO Now is the a la carte option, where if you do not have HBO at all and you want it, you subscribe to HBO Now. HBO Max is its totally separate entity. The confusion lies, however, and I was not able to demystify this before this show, there's still not really clarity on whether or not, like I have HBO Go, Dominic, I know you have HBO Go. There's no clarity yet on whether or not HBO Max will be free to those who already have HBO Go or HBO as a pre-existing cable subscription. That's not yet clear. Yeah. That's the gray area. And I'm hoping that that's the case, though, because it's like, you know, how many how many times, how much more money do I have to give Warner Media? And, and 15 like, bucks, you know, too, is like a ridiculous price to me with all these, like, especially with Disney being only eight. It's like, honestly, when they get past like the $12 mark for me with these streaming apps, I'm just kind of like, yeah, I don't know if I really want to pay for this, and especially because HBO Now is also $15. So it's like, Okay, if I subscribe yeah. to Max, like, is there anything from now that I'm not getting in HBO Max? And it's like, they that, haven't been really clear yes. about any of this. That's a risky move. Dominic, your thoughts. Have we reached a saturation point with uh, streaming services? Yeah, this this is the Wild West. This is Pioneer Times. <laughs> this is Manifest Destiny. And this pandemic, this global pandemic, keeping everyone inside, just kickstart the California gold rush. It is, this has been a long, this has honestly been a long time coming, and um, you know, this is just the disruption of a new technology overtaking the old, old, the old ways, and it just kind of feels like a natural endpoint. It is funny how, it, I, and I'm with, I'm with Joe on this. Like, yeah, it's just so easy if I could just have a Netflix account, uh, Hulu account, Amazon, and then we'll, we'll, you know, whatever. Just keep it there. Keep my bill nice and clean and orderly. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like. Well, do we want to encourage monopolies and stuff? Because we had just talked about last week about how, you know, Amazon is owning everything to the point where they're not only owning production companies, but also possibly owning theaters as well. And then they're going to have their own streaming platform. And it's a complete total vertical integration of of uh, of, uh, of of the of, of their entertainment empire, which is still a fraction of their everything else empire. So I don't know. It's it, it makes sense from a business standpoint where, yeah, of course, CBS is going to have its own, you know, it's going to have try and get their slice of the pie. DC is going to have their slice of the pie. Um, and then these new guys show up like Voodoo and Quibi, which is, uh, you know, uh, which I'm sure we're treating the same way when Netflix first came. I was like, what the hell is a Netflix? You, you mail you you get DVDs over the mail. I can just go to my local Blockbuster. What the hell is this? But um, <laughs> and and um, it's it's going to be real interesting. I will say that, and when when Netflix first started doing this, when the news first came out about this five six years ago, I don't remember anymore. Uh, this is when the big pivot from Netflix was like, okay, um, we're just going to start pouring tens of millions of dollars into original crap. Just throw ideas at the wall give them, there's a great snl skit about uh hey what's your pitch oh well this is the story here's like 10 million dollars go yeah. make it go South and Park it's like it as well like if you just call netflix they're like hello you reach netflix what's your show <laughs> hey what do you got yeah, exactly <laughs> but but you know what it's smart it's a it was a great idea because now everyone wants a piece of the pie they still have their rights to all of these famous shows and famous franchises so of course they're going to lose out and you know uh in the past couple years netflix has been being a big push towards anime big push towards documentaries and it's like yeah that's freaking smart. And, you know, it's it's it, it does lower the quality of things because naturally when you just throw money everywhere and you're not really vetting things too closely, it's not like it's kind of the inverse of HBO. So uh, um, it, it is what it is. It's business. It's the disruption of, you know, a new technology, the Internet and streaming overtaking 
TV and the old empires trying to catch up with it. And it does it does suck for us consumers that we're going to have to pay for like 10 different subscriptions now. But um, that's that's what the pirate base for. That's that's I'll, I'll leave it. <laughs> I'll yeah. leave it there. So, oh, we don't want to condone that piracy. Yeah. We don't want to condone piracy on the oh, show. No. But <laughs> no, it does. No, it does beg. No, it does beg to be stated, though, that there are a lot of these streaming services and it's getting to the point now. And I mean, I know nobody's twisting anybody's arm to go for streaming, but that's what you're hearing is the way of the future, especially now. Like, I have a Roku TV. I started using Roku about a year and a half ago. I haven't looked back. I love it. But it's kind of now throwing out the narrative of, like, the cheaper than cable. It started, oh, you're starting. That was, you're, 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 genius. You're starting that, was, <laughs> that was a genius marketing move. Cut the cable. Cut the cord. At the time, it was true, that though. At, at, the, at the time, it was true, however, though, because you got to think, when I remember starting to hear, like, cut the cord and, like, go for streaming services, it was pretty much like Joe said. It was Netflix, it was Hulu, and it was mm -hmm. Amazon Prime. Disney Plus wasn't out yet. A, I mean, HBO was out there, but HBO's always been a premium cable network. That really hasn't been any different, so it's always been a little specialty pay extra. We're used yeah. to paying it. But, like, this was back, too, and Joe, I thought Joe brought up an excellent point earlier. That this the problem is it makes it hard on the consumer now because it used to be you look towards Netflix and Hulu to be the gatekeepers of like properties. If it wasn't on Netflix or Hulu, you couldn't watch it. But now, because all these other services like Disney and HBO are starting up their own thing and now Warner Media, they're taking away potential content from Netflix. They're taking away from them because they're obviously not gonna put it on their stuff. Disney now is forever frayed that relationship with Netflix pretty much outside of a few little loose movies that they're still under contract, you know? So that's interesting. I'm still amazed. And I mean, granted, it's a time of a pandemic and a price increase would not go over well. This is a little unrelated, but to kind of phase out of this subject, I'm still amazed that we haven't seen an increase in price on a uh, Disney plus. Yeah. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm expecting it to happen though. At some point, like everyone is. It will. Like, it will. I, I it's gonna like, be. It's gonna be nine ninety nine. Yeah, I feel like once like the new Marvel films start coming on there and their shows and the new Star Wars films start cranking out a little bit more and more shows, basically more original content is starting to come on there. You're gonna see it go from eight bucks to like maybe twelve. I know, eventually 15. If it hits that fifteen point, I'm sorry, I'm canceling it. I'll only subscribe to it if I have to watch something on there. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have kids. Like you don't. Yeah. You don't need. You don't need to pay for another babysitter, yeah, which is what. Which is what yeah. Disney. Disney Plus is for a lot of parents. It's a babysitter. Absolutely honestly. is. Absolutely is. Great talk, gentlemen. Awesome way to start the show. Uh, talking HBO Max. Like I said, we're probably going to review. Hopefully, once we get the logistics worked out on how the hell, like we're going, if we're going to be able to even get it, because Dom and I have HBO Go. Hopefully, we'll see some reviews of HBO Max movies. New Seth Rogen movie comes out on HBO Max. Uh, an American Pickle that comes out August 6th. Uh, I'm not going to really dive more into that one. And then also the next Melissa McCarthy movie that she's doing with her husband, Ben Falcone, Super Intelligence. That will be on HBO Max by the end of the year, apparently, too.